like what you see on the screen wish you could jump on in and get it don't you <laughs> today i'm cooking with tammy i'm going to show you how to make the ultimate garlic mashed potatoes with blackened salmon and a delicious creamy shrimp sauce with bacon wrapped asparagus just when you thought it couldn't get no better uh, no worries your girl got you so without further ado let's quickly introduce these ingredients and get to cooking we have our salmon along with our parmesan cheese we also have garlic cloves parsley thick cut bacon white wine sour cream butter jumbo shrimp salt we have our heavy cream along with our seasonings paprika old bay seasoning garlic powder cedar plank salmon seasoning cajun seasoning seafood seasoning creole seasoning salt ground black pepper oil and asparagus so without further ado let's get to cooking first thing we want to do is add some water to a pot once it comes up to a rolling boil we're going to introduce some salt to the water because what we don't want bland potatoes all right once we're done we're going to add our potatoes moving right along to our asparagus now i know a lot of us have never tasted asparagus before it's just one of those things that you see in the grocery store and you don't want to even pick it on up you're like okay it looks kind of funny however i'm going to show you today how to finesse this recipe and how to make your asparagus taste absolutely delicious asparagus should be stiff in texture it shouldn't be slimy or soft at the bottom of the asparagus it's going to have somewhat of a woody type texture at the very bottom once it's cooked it's very hard to even chew let alone digest hold that asparagus on up it's going to have a natural breaking point bend it and it's going to pop on off the part at the bottom you're going to discard obviously and the other part you're going to keep place it under some running water wash it off really good because we don't know who's been touching on our veggies while it was in the supermarket all right grab a paper towel pat them dry place it on into your favorite bowl or dish and we're going to hit it off with a little bit of olive oil if you don't have olive oil no worries hit it off with some avocado oil if you don't have that use what you got after you get the oil on there we're going to add a small pinch of salt for that extra flavor because these veggies to be quite frank and honest are very bland hit it off with a good amount of salt once you're done you're going to hit it with that ground black pepper mix it all up make sure our asparagus has a good coating of salt and ground black pepper if your asparagus don't look like this you did something wrong sorry to tell you <laughs> make sure your asparagus has enough seasoning and the seasoning is perfectly distributed throughout the asparagus once you're done you're going to gather up a few pieces of asparagus make sure it's lined up perfectly grab a piece of that thick cut bacon and we're going to wrap it on up We're not going to be using any skewers or anything to hold the bacon in place. What we are going to do is we're going to use our finger to lock the bacon in place. Lay it down onto your baking sheet. As you can see, we have the baking sheet going on with the cooling rack because we need that excess oil from the bacon to drain on off. Just take your finger, hold it in place, place it down onto the baking sheet just like that in order to keep it locked in place. Bacon wrapped asparagus goes into the oven for about 25 to 30 minutes at 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Not only would that cook our asparagus all the way through, but it's going to still allow that perfect crunch that we're all looking for, or should I say most of us is looking for when it comes down to our veggies. Moving right along, it's time for us to work on our shrimp. All right, as you can see, shrimp has been peeled, deveined, and ready to go. However, I left the tails on for presentational purposes. If you want to take the tails off, you can definitely feel free to do that. But in the meanwhile, we're going to hit it with a small drizzle of oil. Any oil of preference would work perfectly fine. We're also going to hit it with our Cajun seasoning. Add a good amount of Cajun seasoning, only if you're rocking out with a no salted brand. We're also going to hit it off with some Creole seasoning as well. We're going to hit it with a small amount of seafood seasoning. 
We're gonna take this time to hit it off with our cedar wood smoked seafood seasoning. No worries, we'll talk about it a little later in the video. We're also gonna add some garlic powder, simply because I want a nice garlicky flavor. Add some Old Bay seasoning. I'm gonna add a good amount of paprika. Paprika does not have any flavor, but it does offer a good amount of color. I'm gonna mix it up really, really good. Make sure the seasoning is well distributed throughout the shrimp. Check it on out. This looks good so far. Let's mix it up a little bit more. Once we're done, we're gonna place our shrimp to the side. Check out our beautiful piece of salmon. This is, if it has a skin on, get in there with a sharp knife. And once we're done, we're just gonna peel it off. Take your hand and hold it down as much as possible and use your hand as a guide. All right, and you just pull the skin off just like that. We're gonna cut the salmon in half. The salmon, nevertheless, is already washed, pat dried, ready to go. Time to season up the salmon. We're gonna hit it with a small drizzle of oil, just like that. Rub it on in there. Uh huh. And first things first, we're gonna hit it with some Cajun seasoning. Because we're gonna blacken up the salmon. Uh huh. Just like that. Make sure it's well covered and well coated. And we're also gonna hit it with a little Old Bay for some extra flavor. And we're gonna hit it with some of that cedar plank salmon seasoning, AKA seafood seasoning as well. Bop, boom, done. I know how hard it's been to get your hands on the cedar plank salmon seasoning, so guess what? Behind the scenes, I've been working diligently, and your girl cooking with Tammy has her own cedar plank salmon seasoning. And when I tell you it's spot on, it's spot on. I have the best team in the world. You hear me? Cookingwithtammy.shop, grab up your cedar plank salmon seasoning. There's no reason as to why nobody who is subscribed to Cooking with Tammy should not have their cedar plank salmon seasoning at this point. We want all surface areas to be covered with seasoning. Seafood seasoning. This is gonna be so beautiful, trust me. We're also going to hit it with some Old Bay as well. And I'm going to repeat the same process. Just pat it on in there and make sure it's stuck. Take the side right here that doesn't have any seasoning. We have a lot sitting on the cutting board. Why not make sure that is covered as well? All four corners. And we are done. Perfect. We're gonna heat our pan up and we're gonna sear these bad boys on up. So we're gonna be incorporating some garlic to our recipe. When it comes down to the garlic, when I'm ready to eat and get to cooking, it's time to get to cooking and get to eating. So I'm gonna show you a quick way to toast your garlic on up. And let me tell you, it's gonna have the same roasted garlic effect. Only difference is, it's more time efficient. It's gonna take about five to 10 minutes to get the job done. To a small cast iron skillet, we're gonna add a small drizzle of oil, add those garlic cloves, make sure that flame is on low heat. We're gonna brown the garlic on up on every single side, turning it and rotating it only as necessary. In the meanwhile, let the garlic do what it do. Once it gets nice and brown like this, we're gonna flip them on over. As I mentioned, allow it to brown on every single side. Garlic is roasted and done. That's it. Quick and easy. This place smells like garlic oil. I can <laughs> trust me when I tell you. It smells beautiful. In the meanwhile, I'm gonna grate some cheese for our mashed potatoes. I'm gonna be rocking out with sharp cheddar and gouda cheese. We're just gonna set it aside momentarily. We're gonna take the back of a fork and we're just gonna mash it on down and no resistance whatsoever. Check out how soft the garlic is. In the meanwhile to our potatoes, we're gonna add some butter along with our cheeses, both Gouda and sharp cheddar, along with our garlic and sour cream. 
we're going to get in there and mash it up really really good we want to make sure our cheeses along with our garlic is perfectly distributed throughout our potatoes and as you can see i didn't add any milk just yet it's the reason why i didn't add the milk and it's simply because right now the potatoes are hot and i want to keep that heat going because it's going to melt all of the cheeses on down before adding the milk so to speak once you add the milk it's going to drop the temperature of the potatoes and it's going to take time to get everything nice and melted i'm going to be adding heavy cream to these mashed potatoes however feel free to add whatever type of milk you prefer make sure the texture or consistency is good to go before adding any more milk you can see those little garlic bits mixed in between the potatoes this is perfect and I'm also going to hit it off with a small pinch of ground black pepper for that extra flavor. We're going to add a small drizzle of oil and we're going to place our salmon down into the pan. As you can see, our pan is nice and hot. We're going to lower the flame to low medium because we want to give our salmon fillets more than enough time to cook on the stove top. I'm not going to be finishing it off in the oven. A question that I always get when it comes to cooking salmon is, Tammy, how long do I cook the salmon for? I don't like to put a time frame on seafood simply because if I'm working with a two ounce piece of salmon and you're working with a four ounce piece of salmon, evidently the cooking time is going to be obviously different. Once the salmon becomes opaque, pinkish, and has like a whitish color on the outside and the inside is translucent and pink, you're good to go. Using the same pan, we're going to add a small amount of butter. Allow that butter to become nice and melted before adding our beautifully seasoned shrimp. Place it on down into the pan. Make sure the shrimp has full surface contact. Let's go ahead and flip our shrimp on over. Allow it to cook on the other side as well. Once we're done, we're going to remove our shrimp from the pan. Place it onto a plate and set it aside if your shrimp is not cooked all the way through no worries whatsoever we're going to be adding it to a delicious creamy decadence to us in a minute and at that time our shrimp will be cooked all the way through now that our shrimp is out of here using the same pan once again we're going to add a small amount of butter allow that butter to become nice and melted we're going to introduce some finely chopped garlic to the pan yes we are Get that garlic on up in there. Get your spatula. Get some mixing. And of course, at this point in time, we don't want our pan to be too hot because guess what? Our garlic is going to burn. So we need to lower the flame to, let's say, maybe medium heat or even low medium. Now will be the perfect time to add our white wine. However, if you don't want to use white wine, no worries whatsoever. One or two things. You can either substitute with some type of broth, whether it be veggie, seafood, or chicken. And we're going to add our heavy cream. If you want to use half and half, you can definitely use half and half as well. When it comes to the thickening process, it may take a little bit longer. Or you may also have to substitute and use a little bit of cornstarch and water or all-purpose flour and water in my opinion not only is the heavy cream creamier but you don't have to use the other stuff that i mentioned as a thickening agent we're also going to get in there and add our freshly grated parmesan cheese and once we're done we're going to stir it on up really good add the cheese while the temperature of the milk is still warm not hot stir it constantly allow the cheese to slowly melt into the sauce Let's jazz this sauce on up. So we're gonna start off with adding some no salted Cajun seasoning. How much should I add? Just add enough to give it some flavor. We're also gonna add some paprika. This is regular paprika. The paprika, however, does not provide flavor, but it does provide an awesome color. We're also gonna hit it off with some cedar plank seafood seasoning for that extra element of flavor, along with some Old Bay. Once we're done, we're going to mix it up really good. Make sure all of our seasonings are well distributed throughout our sauce. If you look closely, you can see that our sauce is starting to reduce and slightly thicken on up. Let's add our shrimp back to the pan. Now would be the perfect time if your shrimp is undercooked to cook your shrimp all the way through. We're also going to lower our flame to low heat. Allow the sauce to come to a slow simmer. This part right here should take about a minute. 
Once we're finished, we're going to add some freshly chopped parsley for that element of fanciness. For the moment that we've all been waiting for, it's time to plate this delicious meal on up. So we're going to grab a good scoop of mashed potatoes and place it onto our plate. Mm -hmm. Come on, girl. Let's get this staging going. Once we're done, we're going to add some more because we're greedy like that. You know what I'm saying? Our mashed potatoes has the ultimate cheese pull, guys. Yes, it does. Cheese pull from stovetop to countertop. Take that cheese, place it on, <laughs> take that cheese, twirl it onto the mashed potatoes. We're going to hit it off with a small garnish of curly Italian parsley. Once we're done, we're going to set our perfectly seared salmon on top of our delicious bed of mashed potatoes. Let's make this plate look king or queen worthy. I'm going to take that salmon drizzle, that's what we're going to call it, and I'm going to add it on top of the salmon. What I am using is that reserve sauce that came from the salmon after it was sitting in the plate for about five minutes. And we're going to take our delicious Cajun style creamy shrimp sauce and we're going to drizzle it onto our potatoes just like this guys. When I tell you, all right, I should have eaten it on camera just to show you how delicious this recipe is. Let me tell you, absolute perfection on a plate. Let's not forget about our bacon wrapped asparagus, all right? We're going to get those bad boys and we're going to plate at least two of them onto our plate just like that. We're going to hit it off with some more finely chopped parsley and we're going to stand back and we're going to admire, guys, this recipe right here. It didn't take long to put together and I can guarantee you when I tell you the flavors, all right, the flavors in this dish right here, woo, absolutely delicious. You didn't see me eat it on camera, but you can see Mukbang turn up, tear this dish on down on his channel. As a matter of fact, I'm going to link his YouTube link in the bottom of the description bar. You don't forget to copy your seasonings, cooking with Tammy dot shop and as always i want to give a big shout out to all of my channel members i want all of you guys to continue to stay safe and stay blessed and i would definitely catch you in another video talk to you later bye guys